Verses 15 and 16 read this. Thus saith the Lord, A voice was heard in Ramah, lamentation and bitter weeping, Rachel weeping for her children, refused to be comforted for her children, because they were not. Now, we know by studying the scriptures, we know that that passage was prophetic when it was spoken or written. It was prophetic about the day when Herod killed the young boy children in an attempt to destroy Jesus right after Jesus was born. And we know it's talking about Bethlehem. Rachel is Beth Bethlehem. Uh, notice here it says Rahel. It doesn't say Rachel. Some of these are the word games that God played to help keep this mystery hidden. My point is that when I look at this and I look and, and, and realize that in verse 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, there's more prophecy. There's more prophecy. And, and, and all of these clues keep coming up. And all of a sudden here, it looks again like a, a, a lost coin dropped among some rocks. Like this prophecy doesn't actually fit inside the full prophetic cluster, since we know that it is, it is history, or it was history, and in Jesus' day when Jesus was born, shortly thereafter when Herod tried to kill the children, the Jewish children, but here's my point. It's inside a prophetic cluster, and I have to look at that, and I go, now wait a minute. From what I know of the rest of the puzzle, God is going to meet with certain Jews in the wilderness with a face-to-face -face meeting in the wilderness here as the first gathering, probably towards the end of that 1260-day period in the wilderness. So the Lord's going to meet with them in the wilderness and the, mort and the mortals who refuse to obey him will be destroyed. The rebels will refuse, they will be destroyed. Now, pay attention in, that, in this cluster of Ezekiel 20, 33 through 38. God put verse 36 in there to let us know specifically that the events he's talking about in that cluster were not about Moses' day in the wilderness. That's why he put verse 36 in there. So pay attention to the details. How are these mortals who are going to meet with God face to face in the wilderness during the first gathering, how are they going to get to Jerusalem? Stop to think about it. First of all, they're mortals. Now I know God could just zap they're there like he did to uh, Philip when Philip went to preach to the Ethiopian eunuch and all of a sudden he was gone. God could do that. That's very possible for God. But once again, you have a 1260 day period and there's also a 1290 day period that we haven't looked at yet. So you have this 30 day extra period there. And during that 30 day extra period, it's possible that these people in the wilderness will be traveling with God, with the Lord, to Jerusalem. And if they travel through Bethlehem, what's the Lord going to do to the rebels in Bethlehem? Will Rachel be weeping again? If Bethlehem weeps again because as the Lord travels through and goes toward Jerusalem, some of the people in Bethlehem refuse to submit to the Lord, then this, this uh, segment here in verse 15 may actually be prophetic still, again, and part of the full prophetic cluster. I know, you say, boy, that's, that's so far-fetched. Well, it really isn't far-fetched. It's just there's a whole lot more of the puzzle that you haven't seen yet. Once again, we see in all of these different uh, phrases and phraseologies where God is, is talking about the second gathering, but only one time in the scriptures did he use the phrase second time. And the only way we're going to put the puzzle together properly is to realize by all of the clues around those phrases... I mentioned the rebuild Zion clue. That comes up a number of places in the scriptures. You've got to find them all. Look at the other clues that go around it. It's like we have 150 different prophetic clusters. And if we could lay them out all on a table next to each other and start making the correlations, that we might be able to actually put together a definitive, well, this has to happen before this, and so this prophetic cluster goes here, and this happens over there, and... And, and one of these days we're going to consider it perfectly. God said we would. The other thing you're seeing through all of this are God's fingerprints in the King James Version Bible. There are changes that people have made in some of the other versions of the Bible that actually change things in the Scriptures 
that God specifically used words to hide a great mystery, and then somebody came along and said, well, I don't like that word, so I think it ought to be this. Uh, the word islands in Isaiah 66, 19. Uh, the isles afar off. Somebody changed that word in some of the modern translations to the word coastlands. Now, the word coastlands and islands are two different things. Uh, Seattle's on the coast, but that doesn't mean Seattle is on Whidbey Island. Islands and coastlands are two different things. So why did somebody change the word isles in Isaiah 66, 19? They didn't change it in Isaiah chapter 11, verse 12. And it's talking about the same exact events, the second gathering. They changed it for a reason, and we may talk about that further on down the road. But there was a specific reason why they changed it. And ultimately it's because having the islands still in existence at that point, after the Lord comes in, Re in Isaiah chapter 66, verse 15 and 16, you see the Lord coming with fire and sword, you see... The gathering of the nations in verse 18. You see the second gathering of the scattered Jews in verse 19 and 20. Well, that didn't really fit with their preconceived idea about the book of Revelation. If you study the subject of Revelation uh, 16, 20, and every mountain, every island fled away and the mountains were not found, and you actually study that out and figure out what God is saying there, ultimately, there's only two directions islands can go when they fled away. They either go down or they go out. But when you consider this, the phrase fled away in Revelation chapter 20, verse 11 through 15, where it talks about this heaven and this earth fled away, and realize that it means that they're going to be destroyed completely because there's going to be a new heaven and a new earth according to Revelation 21, 1 through 4. So the phrase fled away in Revelation 20.11 indicates that this heaven, this earth will be destroyed. They're going to flee away, probably burning up with fire as they're fleeing away from the great white known judgment. So when you take that back to Isaiah chapter, or Revelation chapter 16 verse 20, every island fled away and the mountains were not found. Considering that, islands are the tops of mountains. So if the mountains were not found, where are the islands? Um, once again, when you put the whole puzzle together, you begin realizing that um, there will be no more islands eventually. The problem is that the destruction of the islands in Revelation 16:20 happens before Revelation chapter 19, verse 11 through 16, where you see the Lord coming on a white horse with the saints. He's already bloody. They didn't realize that that means he will already have been on the earth in a battle. Uh, but what they saw was is two different chronological patterns. You have islands destroyed in Revelation 16, 20, and then the Lord comes, assuming that that's the first time the Lord will be on the earth, which it's not. And then you get to Isaiah 66, and you have the Lord coming with fire and sword, but there's still islands, Revela or Isaiah 66, 19. So what did they do? They had to make an adjustment. Somewhere along the line, the chronological pattern is wrong. So what did they do? They changed the word isles in Isaiah 66, 19 to the word coastlands because that got rid of their, their problem with their chronology. And basically what they did, they adjusted the Bible to their theology instead of adjusting their theology to the Bible. I've been working on this puzzle uh, for almost 14 years now. I started out believing that God had preserved His Word in the Bible. I didn't start out trying to prove anything about the King James Bible. I just believed that God preserved His Word. And the reason I chose to believe that was because I knew on Judgment Day, when I stand before God, if I'm wrong about something that I pre presented to other people from the, the Bible, if I'm wrong, it will be because the Bible was wrong, not because I decided not to believe the Bible. So I felt it safer to just stand on God's promise that He said, Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. So I decided to believe him and, and be willing to be wrong on Judgment Day if, if I had to stand before the Lord and give account of why I decided to believe the King James Version Bible. But through the process of study, I began to realize that God left his fingerprints in this Bible. And he has proven to me, without question, that he has preserved his word in the King James Version Bible. And that's what all these little word games will prove 
to those who are willing to hear. Now Jesus said in the book of Revelation a number of times, He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. And the question is, are you willing to hear the truth from the Word of God? Are you more interested in just adjusting the Bible to your thinking? I'll be coming up with some more videos, uh, some new subjects. I'm not going to continue on with all of this because we have a lot more to share, a lot of different subjects. Like I said, there's, there's, as far as I can tell, there's 69 different uh, uh, references to the second gathering in the scriptures, and we've already seen a number of those. They're always worded differently, but it's the clues in the prophetic clusters around them that help us realize that's the events we're looking at. These are the word games God played. Thank you for watching God's Revelation Mystery YouTube channel. Uh, keep checking in. There will be more videos coming up in the future. Uh, I'm going to talk about probably about the rapture next. I think I'm going to talk about the uh, all the evidence I've found in the scriptures about the rapture, present what I'm seeing, the very real possibility that the rapture may be actually imminent in the very near future, and it's from details in the scriptures that nobody else seems to want to look at. It's easy to assume something from a verse that they imagine is the rapture, which really is not. We'll talk about that too. Keep watching, you're going to enjoy what you see. In the end, it, it comes down to the very real possibility that the rapture could be about to happen. So, check back in. Thank you. Bye-bye.